So today we talk about our last method of solving quadratic equations, and that's using the quadratic formula. When all else fails, I typically go to this. So as freshman year stated, we have ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the form of a quadratic. And usually when we're solving that, we're setting it equal to zero. The quadratic formula solves for x values, and those x values are equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus quantity of 4ac all over 2a. So if we take a problem like this, we initially notice that it's not set equal to zero, and the quadratic formula states that we have to have the quadratic set equal to zero. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Take and subtract 12, so 3x squared minus x minus 12 is equal to zero. 3 ends up being our a term. There's an unwritten 1 on this x. That's our b term, and it's negative. And then we have a c term of 12. So plugging in the quadratic formula, we have the opposite of b, so that's a positive 1, plus or minus square root, b squared, that's negative 1, quantity squared, minus 4, times a, which is 3, times c, which is negative 12, over 2. And this is going to be equal to our x value. So I have 1 plus or minus square root of 1, 12 and 12 is 144, and that's going to be positive. Over 2 simplifies to 1 plus or minus the square root of 145 over 2. And if this final radical form reduces, we'd want to reduce that, but 145 has no perfect squares in it, so this problem is going to be done. So in this case, we have an a coefficient of 2, negative 2 for b. Negative 5 for C. Let's go through. We have 2 plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times A times C over 2 times 2, which is 4, gives me 2 plus or minus square root of 4 plus 40 over 4, or 2 plus or minus square root of 44 over 4. 44 has a perfect square in it, so that can be simplified. 2 plus or minus 2 root 11 over 4. Notice I have a GCF in the numerator of 2, so I can pull that out, left with 1 plus or minus the square root of 11 over 4. The 2 and the 4 reduce, therefore my final answer is 1 plus or minus the square root of 11 all over 2. So in this next problem, very similar to the last, the solution might be a little bit different, but the setup is still the same. Take the opposite of b, which is negative 1, plus or minus b squared, or 1 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 10 over 2. So that's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 40 over 2. It's negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 39 over 2. Now we notice we have a square root of a negative number, and that's not a real number, that's imaginary, so we take and use our i terminology. This is i root 39. So this solution is not a real number solution, it's an imaginary number solution. Next we turn to a topic called the discriminant. And the discriminant is really the set of terms underneath the square root and the quadratic formula. And what it does 
is it describes how many intercepts or roots you're going to have in your quadratic. If the discriminant is less than zero, like in the last example we did, we get no real number solutions and therefore your graph would look something like this because to have a real number solution you have to hit the x-axis. This could also look like this depending on the graph, but the point is it doesn't touch the axis. If the discriminant is equal to zero, then think about it, we have plus or minus the square root of something, and if that's equal to zero, we only have one number. We have the number outside for the fraction, whatever that number is, probably not zero. And that gets us one root, so the graph would look something like this, or perhaps it could look something like this, where it only touches that axis once. Lastly, if the discriminant is greater than zero, we get two x-intercepts or two solutions. And our graph could look like this, and likewise, it could look something like this. But the point is, it crosses the axis in two spots. So, we're going to find out what the value of the discriminant is and state the number of solutions we have. In order to do so, again, we need to set the equation equal to zero. So I have 3x squared plus 10x minus 12 equals 0. But in this case, we're just going to look at the discriminant. So that's b squared, or 10 squared, minus 4 times 3 times negative 12. And really, all I need to do is look for whether this is positive or negative. This is 100. This is positive 144. And I know that that's greater than zero, so therefore I have two intercepts for solutions. And I'm done. So let's move from the discriminant to doing a quick word problem and possibly solving with the uh, quadratic formula. And it looks like we've got a water treatment plant and to be built on an electric or a rectangular piece of land 75 by 200 so this is your 200 this is your 75 uh, we need the building and facilities to cover 10,000 square feet so that's this area right here this is 10,000 square feet and you want to have as much room as possible between the edge of the site and the building. So we try to keep that centered, thus equally distant from each side. And we want to find the value of x and solve the problem. So in this case, so if we want to set up an equation for this and find out the value for x, we know that the building's area plus this area is going to equal our total area. I can tell you the building's dimensions by saying, well, if I have 200 going across and I'm removing x from one side and removing x from the other, this dimension is 200 minus 2x. Likewise, if I have 75 going across this way and I'm moving x from one side and removing x from another side, this dimension is 75 minus 2x. Now what I can say is I can say, well, I have the dimensions of this rectangle in terms of x, and I know what the dimensions area or the rectangle's area is. So I can write an area equation stating 200 minus 2x multiplied by 75 minus 2x, and that's equal to 10,000. If I solve this, I get my value for x, and this is my value of this bordered region. But now I have to do the algebra involved, so I'm going to have to foil this out. So I take 200 times 75, which gets me 15,000. Minus 400x. Minus 150x. 
plus 4x squared equals 10,000. Now, we're going to need to set aside equal to 0 and arrange our terms so that we have ax squared plus bx plus c. So that's 4x squared negative 550x and 5,000. And set that equal to zero. And even though it's large, I can use a quadratic formula to solve. So I take the opposite of b, which is 550, plus or minus square root of negative 550 squared minus 4 times 4 times 5,000 over 2 times 4. So now we go ahead and grind that out. So I get 550 plus or minus the square root of 294,500 over 8. And I'm just looking for a numerical answer. I'm not really concerned about simplifying that radical. So I'll plug that into my calculator. And I get 136.58. And point nine seven. And then I look at these two answers and say, well, one of these makes no sense. And that answer is the 136, because if I have 136 on both sides, I'm over 200. And clearly, I can't have 136 on this side, because it's only 75 long. So my border is 0.97, which isn't a whole heck of a lot. So we've got... Do your connect dead, fill out your lesson summary, we'll chat tomorrow.